So I'm Manpahasa Panya. I'm originally from Malaysia. I was born in Malaysia, Ipoh. So I born in 1960. And uh, I am a, uh, was a born Buddhist, but of course, uh, in those days that you know, we, we, we so call ourselves Buddhists, actually we know nothing about Buddhism, you know. We, we, the, all, all we know is uh, to go to pray to the Buddha, the statues, that kind of, you know, Buddhist. Only later I come to Buddhism as I've grown up, you know. And actually I started to have, in, I mean, interested in Buddhism much more is after my mother passed away. And my mother passed away like, and I started to really look into life, like some of the things that I've been running away, like to want to look at it, you know, like you feel scary. <laughs> you know, then, ah, maybe I'm too young. Ah, I'm, uh, maybe I, 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 I deal with it as it happened, you know. But uh, my, my, the passing away of my mother really made me to really look at it, the things that I find I don't want to touch, I find that it's a very scary thing to, to explore, you know. And yeah, at that time, um, I met Bhante Sujato in 1998. So I used to support him, you know, every morning I go to, I go to work, I would drop off Dana, you know. And so I, I know Bhante Sujato very well. And his uh, our whole family been supporting him when he was in Ipoh. And actually, he's the one who asked me to come here. Because when I told him in, 19, uh, in 2000, so I told him that I, I just I want to become a, a nun, you know. Then he said, oh, you go to Damasara. They just bought a land, you know, they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to build a, 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 a nun's monastery there. So then I, I, I wrote in, but that time nothing. So when I wrote to uh, the, the founding abbot Anjan Wayama in two, uh, uh, 2000, she said that, you know, they haven't had any, you know, accommodation yet, you know. Then uh, she asked me to wait. So I went to Thailand and other places to practice. So then uh, in 2000, uh, end of 2001, and she wrote to me that you can come next year, 2002. Then I came here in 2002. When I was a lay person, other places to practice, like I've been to Thailand, Wapanara Chat, you know, I stay there. But once I'm here, I'm, I'm really quite committed. So I start from Anagarikas and then summon uh, uh, ten precepts and then the, uh, the bikuni ordination, you know. So yeah, since then I'm, I'm here till now. I think, uh, I think monastic life, the most difficult thing is that losing the sense of self. <laughs> you can't control, isn't it? You, you, you know, you, you just, you know, like, like in lay life and you have money, you have this, you can control, you know. Like, especially it's a, quite a scary thing to many people, losing the sense of self, like you're not in control. And that is the hardest thing to give to let go of the sense of self. But I think that is, uh, and also in monastic life, the difficult part is the, the, the persistency, you know, and the consistency to keep going, to keep the fire going. Actually, it's much more difficult than just inspire and become a monastic. It's actually very easy. Because keep going, because the lifestyle is so boring. I mean, as you know, it's so nothing and constantly you have to work with your own departments. You have nowhere to run. When you're lay people, when you're outside there, you got so a lot of escape rope, you know. <laughs> you don't like it, you don't look at it, you can find ways to do a lot of escape rope. But in the monastery, you've been really look, you have to look at it, you know, you've been forced. To, to look at yourself because it's sometimes it's not very pleasant to, to, to look at oneself and to, to look at some of those unresolved emotions is not easy, you know, but it's worth, worthwhile. They have lots of support um, from the monks, you know, especially Ajahn Brahms and the other monks, they're very supportive. I remember in 2009 when our uh, Bikuni ordination, and like the next day is ordination. The day before, we, we received lots of phone call from overseas and things like that. And they tried to convince us and try to, you know, persuade us that not to go ahead. 
they think that it's not or not, and then that they, they keep telling us like, oh, maybe you know, it will create the schism and da 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 like that. You know, the actually we didn't do anything. We just want to keep presenting. <laughs> I'm not going out there to harm someone, even to, you know. To, to me, initially, I don't really have much. Like I, for me, I was thinking, yeah, I just oh, I want, I just want to practice. It doesn't matter whether I'm a pikuni or not. To me, it's like that's all. But then, when I look at it, I said, you know, you cannot stop people want to become a nun. So why not you let them do it properly rather than you you let people have the opportunities, you know, that really, you know. Properly, you know, I, I know a lot of lay people. They they're so confused. They don't they don't, can't even differentiate what is major, what what is siale, and what is samana. <laughs> what is they present now? And then a sila dara. They really confused. They say either you are a nun or not a nun, a monk or not a monk, isn't it? A lot of people believe that the the bikuni will shorten the 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 the, the Buddha sasana. This is what they believe. But I I said no because you know I respect what that because. This is conditioning and non-self. I have I have no aversion and ill will towards whoever object because they themselves because they believe that because they've been told they've been conditioned. It's not their fault, you know. So that's why sometimes we no point that we keep arguing that you are wrong. You you know this is wrong. You there's no end. So I think it's much more important that um, not really what we said is important. And what we do, you know, we really, we really, you know, through our own actions, to prove that actually it's really benefit many, many people. It's benefit lots of people. Like for example, some lady they find it very difficult to speak to a monk. It's something really personal. You feel embarrassed, <laughs> you know. They feel comfortable to come to speak to nuns. They said actually it's it's important. It's really beneficial, and also to show that it's possible that. You know, women can be the uh, spiritual re- leader. Is not you know because I have met some even in in Thailand, some Meiji. To them, they really believe that they believe that they are they are really second class. They are really they really because they've been told, being brainwashed, keep telling that you are no good. You know, <laughs> you are not as good as man. Uh, man, and even some of them even believe that. Being born as a a a a female is bad karma, you know. And even even some monks even said that oh, you've been born as a female because of previous life you break the third precept. I will say what? I said there are billions of lady they all commit the same action, <laughs> be born. I mean to me like doesn't make sense, you know. So but I mean you can't blame them because. Is passed down and being conditioned, being told that where even they themselves believe that you know, so and then actually it's really help a lot of women to have the self confidence, have the confidence in themselves. They don't have to rely on others. Is this possible? You know, it takes time because of uh, I I I don't blame them because they've been in that traditions. There's the teacher and they've been told that way and. To change that is really take time. Is to recondition someone is not something easy, but I believe that you know that some you know eventually. But I I, I know some many monks personally they're okay, that that they're, they're quite supportive you know, but they just don't want to openly to say that I support. But I I, I met many monks that that pers- I mean on a personal level they're very supportive. But they just don't want to be the one go out there in front and declare that I support, you know. Yeah, and even you know, and we even have not only that we benefit more a female, and sometimes men, because we have people, for example, have someone call, then we always recommend them. Oh, you go to body, Anna, you know, we love for the monks, you know. Then they say, I don't want, I don't want, a, <laughs> I want a female teacher, I don't want a male teacher, you know, because sometimes for them they feel. They feel more comfortable. Maybe female is more motherly. They feel, they feel the comfort of you know that they, they don't have to feel like I have to be tough. You know, like in in front of other men, you say, oh, I have to be tough. You know, but in front of a female teacher, that they can be themselves. They can be really soft. It's okay to be soft. You know, and I think some some of them they feel more comfortable. 
So uh, how, how can lay community? Uh, what can lay community do to support uh, bikinis? What can we do? Yes, I think uh, uh, I think it's good for lay uh, community knows more about the vinaya to know how to support because lots of lay people they they just. They they from a they come from a good place. They mean well, and they don't know certain things actually is no good. They encourage amongst the nuns to do that. Yeah, you know, it's good to encourage them to support them to keep the vinaya rules, rather than to encourage them not to keep it. You know, like you know, some they they human being. You know, as long as the underlying tendency is there. Given the condition, you know, they easily get pulled in. So, but to to really want to support the Buddha Sasana, I think it's really it's good to support monks and nuns to to keep their precept, but not to encourage them and not to keep it. You know, it's good to encourage them. You know, sometimes it's not necessary. It's not really good for especially especially for monks and nuns. Like sometimes you spoil them. You know, and. A lot of temptation outside, but it's good to really to help them to support them to to keep to keep the vinaya rather than to to spoil them. I I never plan, you know. First of all, I I when I was young, I never thought that I want to become a nun one day. It's happened by slowly as you practice, and as I enjoy the mon uh, living in the monastery much more. This is how it's just natural. I come to monastic life. But let alone thinking of becoming an abbot, because it's just that so sudden, like she's sick, and you know, then someone have to take up the responsibility. It's not that I want to take it up. It's just that I was really in the situation that like I have no choice. I have to do it. Yeah, you know? and of course at the beginning when I do it, you know, you have to deal with lots of you know. Uh, all these situations, you know, and then and then sometimes you think, what am I doing here? I don't become a nun to do this, you know. I was thinking that I let go of the whole world. I come here to to live a peaceful life. I'm not going to want to do this. I'm not become a nun to do this. Then the moment I catch myself have this, so I know that no, to, you 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 either you have to make the de determination. You either stay or you leave. If you stay, no complain. Just do whatever. Yeah. But actually, it's really help. Also, I can see that the let go of my sense of self, the control, rather thinking of what I want to do, but just do what needs to be done, and that's really helped me to let go lots of my controlling. And people think that being abbot you can control. Actually, no. <laughs> Even worse, <laughs> a lot of things you cannot control. You have learned to let go a lot and a lot. You learn to let go. You learn to let go, and you learn to embrace everybody, accept as they are. Not to try to change everybody, try to shape them into a, into your idea, nuns, you know. Do you think maybe one day Poland? Uh -huh. Poland will have a monastery. Uh, yeah. I hope that Poland have candidate. <laughs> Want to come to train? You who knows? You don't know, you know. <laughs> So how would you encourage the Polish ladies uh, to, to come? I mean, the first of all, ask them to come and stay with us. Because it's important. That, like for example, we have someone that um, she's, for her, before she wanted to come here, she had all sorts of ideas about nuns. Oh, they must be very serious and things like that. And when she first came, she was so cautious and she was so tight, you know. After she stay here, she stay for a month here, and then she, she's I think uh, she's from uh, she's originally from Germany, and then she said that oh, I was thinking before I came in, I have the, I can imagine the nuns you know must be very serious and things, and then they come in, they work with the nuns, and she was very happy, and she had no idea of like you know whether to become a, a nun or not, but and then after she stay here for a month, she started to. To get like she told me, I'm now start to take interest in. First of all, they have to come here to experience that, because they said she was so happy here. Then that's why she she poked in again for the rain retreat for three months. So first of all, they have to come and stay, 
and then they enjoy, you know, the, the, the work with the nuns. And then they know, yeah, actually, the, all the nuns are their normal, their jokes, that, you know, <laughs> they're just like any other normal being, you know, <laughs> they're not something because they have this impression that they must be very serious, you know. I mean, it's, most of them, some of the nuns here, they're very good because even before they come here, some of the profession, they themselves is very good. They, they have no problem giving talks. Some of them are journalists. We have that uh, she's a journalist, Bangkok Post, you know, and then we have scientists, and then we have lecturer, we have a doctor, a medical doctor, and then after that she was uh, teaching in uh, universities, you know. They have no problem, but they themselves don't want to do that. They want to be more grounded before they go out to teach. Like some people say, oh, I want to become, I, 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 I'm inspired. I, so then I tell them, you come here, you don't see Ajahn Ram, you know. <laughs> like some people, that they, they know Ajahn Ram, and then they don't know, they thought that it's very close, you know. They want to become a man, I tell them, very far, one and a half hours, you know. I said, you know, we are, we are not close. So if you want to, to, to get teaching from Ajahn Ram, sorry, Dhammasara is not right, it's not for you. <laughs> you hardly see Ajahn Ram. <laughs> Even the monks themselves in body are not, don't always see him, let alone here. I said, we are very far. We normally, we only go once in a while when Ajahn Ram there, we will go to body for his talk. I said, normally here, I said, you know, you only have me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not inspired, too bad, you know. <laughs> but basically, the most of them are quite good. They're, 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 they're very appreciative, like all the nuns here, appreciative and, and really grateful for like what I have done and, and they know that I'm very protective of them because somehow, whoever I take in, I have responsibility to them. And I really don't want to damage the monastic life. Would you maybe come to Poland to give a Dhamma talk one day? Mm. Is it possible? Mm -hmm. Do you actually travel to Europe? I travel, but I normally I has to be invited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I normally, yeah, yeah. I hope, I hope one day you uh -huh. come if you are okay. busy. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that one day we have a candidate from uh, Poland. Yeah. <laughs> it, because here is we focus on training nuns. Eventually, also when they, uh, you know, when they when they become more senior, you know, they're more grounded. Eventually, also they have to leave because I can't keep thinking, you know, if people have to leave and then they can go back to the country and start 